Soon, the flying aircraft carrier will become a reality and will be America's new powerful weapon. The United States carries a great deal of naval power with its 10 aircraft carrier strike groups, each equipped with a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and a 30-knot floating airfield, costing at least 165 million pounds. However, the United States is not only the largest naval power, but also has the largest air power. What are the components of its air superiority? These are the stealthy F-22 and F-35 fighters and the powerful stealthy Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit strategic bomber. But soon the United States may have flying aircraft carriers. Now we will tell you about this exciting project of the U.S. Army, which has the potential to change a lot in terms of the wars of the future, which, given current events, seem inevitable. More than a century ago, before the First World War, engineers came up with the concept of flying airfields, aircraft that could carry other aircraft. Why was there a need for such structures? The reason was twofold. On the one hand, fighters had a limited range, while bombers were vulnerable to fighters. In other words, at the time, bombers had sufficient range to attack enemy targets inland, but fighters could not follow them that far. As a result, they became easy targets for enemy aircraft. However, if fighters could be brought along and launched at the right time, the effectiveness of the bombing could be greatly increased. German engineers were the first to create flying airfields which were zeppelins, not airplanes. In January 1918, an experiment was carried out in which an Albatross D-3 fighter was attached to the bottom of an L-35 airship. This design was successfully tested, but the war was nearing its end, and Germany could not be saved so the airships did not have time to demonstrate their full potential. In the 1930s, the United States was at the forefront of airship development, creating two of the largest aircraft carriers in history, the USS Akron, ZRS-4, and the USS Macon, ZRS-5. These airplanes were extremely large, for example, the Akron was almost 787 feet long and had a crew of 89 people. Each of these airships could carry up to five small aircraft that could perform reconnaissance or provide defense. In 1932, the N-2Y trainer and the F-9C Sparrowhawk fighter aircraft were successfully docked to the airship using a special device. It is important to note that during the off-duty period, the aircraft were attached not to external holders, but to the internal hangars of the blimp. Thus, Akron and Macon were actually flying military bases. These machines were extremely complex from a technical point of view. Shortly after their creation, Akron and Macon suffered tragic accidents and crashed. The reason for these crashes was the insufficient strength of their design. With the advent of nuclear weapons and the outbreak of the Cold War, interest in aircraft carriers grew. It is worth noting that before the development of modern intercontinental ballistic missiles, strategic bombers were the main means of delivering nuclear weapons to enemy territory. At the beginning of the Cold War, the United States established its leadership in this field by creating the impressive Convair B-36. For self-defense, the aircraft was armed with 16 20 mm cannons, but the military did not think this was enough. Therefore, they decided to install the McDonnell XF-85 Goblin fighter on the B-36, which could protect the bomber from enemy aircraft. The XF-85 was located inside the carrier aircraft and released from the outside using a special mooring device. The Goblin itself was a miniature jet fighter with four 12.7 mm machine guns. It reached an impressive speed of up to 1043 kilometers per hour, or 648 miles, but in general, it lagged far behind the best fighters of the United States and the Soviet Union. This was one of the reasons why the XF-85 concept was abandoned. Only two prototypes of the Goblin were built. There was another similar concept called Tom Tom. This project involved attaching F-84 fighters to the wingtips of B-29 and B-36 bombers. The latter bomber was more powerful and threatening than the Goblin, but this carrier project was not realized either. The problem that prevented its realization was the issue of safety. The strong vortices formed at the ends of the bomber's wings caused the fighters to tilt heavily. This caused concern among American fighter pilots, as they questioned who was more dangerous, the enemy or the bomber itself which they were supposed to protect. With the advent of intercontinental missiles and the development of safe aerial refueling, the concept of flying aircraft carriers seemed lost. However, with the advent of unmanned aerial vehicles, everything changed. The rapid development of this technology has had a significant impact on the tactics of warfare. 
The idea was to create an aviation system, including a carrier aircraft and a swarm of drones, that would perform reconnaissance and attack missions. Imagine a scenario where a huge aircraft being outside the enemy's air defense launches dozens of small, unmanned aerial vehicles that penetrate enemy territory, perform their assigned tasks, and then return to their base. Of course, each drone lags behind fighter jets such as the F-35 or F-22 in terms of performance. However, they are much cheaper and can operate in large numbers simultaneously. Tactically, such a system should occupy an intermediate position between cruise missiles and manned aircraft. Cruise missiles are capable of attacking targets independently, but they are highly expensive. Airstrikes, on the other hand, can be less expensive, but require aircraft to penetrate the enemy zone, which poses risks to pilots. The use of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, will allow them to perform reconnaissance or combat missions with the necessary efficiency, but without immediate threats to pilots. As part of this concept, the Gremlins program was developed under the auspices of DARPA, the U.S. Department of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Gremlins, named after mythical characters in English military folklore, are the main actors in this program. The main goal of the program is to develop a functional system for the rapid launch and return of low-cost reusable UAVs on board an aircraft carrier. The Gremlins are to be launched from various types of base ships, such as bombers, transport aircraft, fighters, and carrier UAVs, while they are out of range of enemy air defense. The main factor under consideration is to reduce overall costs. Various figures have been mentioned from 10 to 30 deployments, after which the system becomes cost-effective. The first carrier aircraft used was a converted Lockheed C-130 Hercules. It is designed to carry several Dynetics X-61A UAVs. The X-61A UAV developed under the Gremlins program is a relatively compact drone with a length of 4.2 meters and a wingspan of 3.5 meters. The payload weighs approximately 65 kilograms. The drone is equipped with a single Williams F-107 turbofan engine capable of reaching a speed of M equals sign 0, 6. The X-61A is expected to carry a variety of payloads, such as sensors, electronic warfare systems, and weapons. In November 2019, the X-61A was separated from the Hercules wing, and the drone made a successful independent flight lasting 1 hour and 41 minutes. The experiment did not involve returning the drone to the aircraft, so the X-61A had to land using a parachute. However, the parachute failed to open due to a malfunction, and the drone crashed. In 2020, there were several unsuccessful attempts to return the X-61 to the carrier aircraft. As a result, all vehicles were returned to the ground using parachutes. However, on November 6, 2021, Hercules was able to successfully pick up the X-61 using a retractable mechanical arm and transfer it to its cargo hold. This stage was the last test of the final flight phase. Its purpose was to demonstrate the ability of the carrier aircraft to receive up to four X-61A UAVs in less than 30 minutes. In addition, it has become known that DARPA is considering the possibility of loading a new payload on drones when they are deployed by carrier aircraft personnel. This means that the Gremlins could perform several missions during one carrier aircraft flight. The ongoing DARPA project is experimental in nature and is aimed at testing basic technical solutions in the field of unmanned aerial vehicle UAV swarming. In order to gain valuable experience, a new similar system may be developed based on the project results, initially suitable for use in the Air Force. The Pentagon plans to have fully operational flying aircraft carriers by 2030. This will most likely make the United States not only the country with the most powerful fleet of aircraft carriers at sea, but also the strongest fleet of aircraft carriers in the air. Don't forget to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with the latest captivating videos on intriguing new weapon projects.